Hello, everybody, and welcome to Throwbacks with the Technodrome, a show where three 80s babies, 90s kids take a trip down memory lane to revisit the pieces of pop culture that formed us and deformed us. I'm Cast. I'm Scales. And I'm Duff. And we are the Technodrome. everybody and welcome we are in the middle of winter things are in full swing we've had our first significant snowfall even down in the south where senor scales resides yes Gents, how you doing today duff scales what's going on good I'm ready to get into our topic i'm excited Me Duffy, too. Are you excited yeah uh yeah we uh we survived a, another bomb cyclone um you know we seem to be getting these a lot uh they apparently are dangerous but I survived. We're okay. COVID couldn't take you down. Bomb <laughs> well, cyclones was, can't again, take you down. That was Santa. Santa brought me COVID. So he's kind of a jerk, but yeah, uh, we're in a fight. I, I'll just Horrible write gift. another letter. I, know, I, just, I thought I was a good boy, but I guess. Yeah, better work harder this year and be a good boy. <laughs> good old COVID clause. Yeah, he, gave, <laughs> he gave you uh, the gift of a better immune system. Oh, <laughs> A sweetheart. He gave, he gave he gave you immunity. <laughs> <laughs> so, scales. You mentioned being excited about our topic today. I'm very excited about our topic today too. So, going along with the theme of it being colder outside. Can I be excited about the topic too, please? <laughs> you can be. Okay, Are you? you? Yes. Good. Good man. So, when it's colder outside, and when you were, even when you're a kid, you spend less time outside unless you're having snowball fights or playing football or having a tackle fest like we used to do with no football it's just you know, it's a tackle hitting. fest picture of tackle football but without a football you're just hitting people oh. and trying to you know, <laughs> bring them down to the ground slam them into cars oh, geez. whatever geez. Geez. that's how they do it in brooklyn that's crazy yeah, it's crazy yeah, that's how, how we roll <laughs> we need to have a talk yeah so what's what's Are the you, best the best part about playing tackle football in the snow it's hitting people it's not scoring a touchdown you can do that when it's nice out so this true. we just you know wow. cut to the chase <laughs> <laughs> I like but, it. you know so when we weren't out cracking each other's heads we're probably inside watching tv and mm -hmm. the greatest network for children is by far Nick, 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 Nickelodeon and that is our topic for today Gentlemen, do you have any early memories of watching Nickelodeon? I'll throw it to Mr. Scales. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just, I remember watching it before school. I remember watching it like, um, you know, kindergarten age, preschool age, like coming home early from there and, and watching the early afternoon. Do you remember um, watching in the crib? No, no, no. That's that's Castania. He remembers everything <laughs> from the crib. <laughs> um, I do have I, some really early memories, but <laughs> I remember, um, you know, as we got a little older, watching it like uh, evening time before dinner when they got into doing all the game shows, um, and then of course, you know, Saturday Night Nick um, was huge as we got a little bit older after that. So, I just different times of my life, different programming times on on the channel. Everything was amazing. Um, it's just, I keep going back to this, but it's just like one of those things that you th we think about from our childhood, like Nintendo, like Disney, like it just makes you happy when you think about it. It's just that ultra nostalgia. Like it was just our life as a kid. Oh yeah. How did you get to watch it all this time? You have an older brother, you have parents, like Tony wasn't beating you up for the remote. <laughs> nah, he was, you know, six, six years apart. I guess he was able to, I mean, probably when I was real young um maybe we watched some some together like i remember watching double dare with him together but as i got a little older he was probably you know doing some more cool things for a teenager than watching 
Nick with his little yeah. brother. <laughs> <laughs> I figured he'd be just changing the channel. Like I'm not watching this. this nah. stuff. I'm too old. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, but with, with my own TV or I would escape to my parents' room probably and watch it in there if I was hiding <laughs> from him from, you know, <laughs> getting beat up <laughs> or fart on yeah uh, <laughs> uh mr duff any early memories of Nin- uh almost said nintendo nickelodeon nintendo uh what, wait, uh what episode is this no um this uh i mean initially i was just thinking of you know going back and just listening to those little like you know nickelodeon intros and i grabbed a couple of them and this just it just hits me right in the feels so uh why don't we all just sit and gather here and uh, take a little listen and see if you have the same feels as I do. Nick, 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 Nickelodeon. Amazing. And yeah. number two. On the Lord of Hiroat, Nick. On the Lord of Hiroat, Nick, Nick. On the Ricky Tigolo, while living number one, Nickelodeon. So I just love that. Love that. Love I love those. Nickelodeon. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I don't know. I just, I love those. Like, I don't know. It just, uh, it makes me think of like, you know, all those great shows when you were watching when I was little and like, you know, there was, there was periods of time where we didn't like, you know, have cable, we had cable. So I would always take advan- full advantage of that. Or if it was like one of those free weekends, like remember back in the day with cable, like you'd get super excited if there was like free weekend, we're opening up such and such channels. Usually there's yep. like HBO or Showtime or the movie channel. And I was like, yes. And then there was Nickelodeon. I'm like, yes even better and um yeah just like uh but you know for a period of time you know too having it and coming home from school and you know i know we're gonna get into that later but uh yeah it's just uh it's hearing those like you know those little notes and just the nickelodeon thing at the end just gets me right in the feels and uh yeah just makes me want to watch it right now actually i think i'm gonna go i'm gonna turn my tv <laughs> <See ya. laughs> where, where exactly I, the feels located because the last time i got hit um, the feels, i felt nauseous and i went i went down to a knee uh, right above the the gloops. Oh, the gloops. Um, I don't know if you have the gloops. They're right. I have the, the I have the Augustus gloops. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, <I> got gotcha. you. <laughs> uh, anyway, no, but uh, yeah, that's that's kind of how I feel on it. And I just yeah. I was very excited to play those two little clips because I heard those and I was like, yes, I got to play those. So yeah, I was hoping to hear the opera singer one too. <laughs> I was oh, looking, I know exactly when, which one you're talking about. I couldn't find it. Yeah. <laughs> and preparing to do this episode, Scale sent one that I had forgotten about. Where Was it ants? Yeah, the little ants on like the picnic. Oh, yeah. It's the one that looks yes, like yes. he shrunk and he hiccups. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a really good one. There's so many. And they're like, why, why is it that that, like, obviously they, they chose that kind of sound for a reason to speak to kids. But why does that type of sound and music speak to us? Like, like what, what is it about that? That's so like. I don't have it child. anymore. Yeah. They, don't have, they don't do those things anymore. And I feel like kind of like what we were talking about too, with, um, you know, TGIF, they, you know, those all had like intro songs and themes and everything. Nowadays, there's nothing like that. And I yeah. think that it, it screams to us because we're, you know, one of the later generations to experience that. Um, right. They just don't seem to have that kind of stuff anymore. And it's, I don't know, that's, that's at least how I think of it. But. Well, thinking about it now, I think that, music was a little more special back then not quality wise not saying that songs were better but the way that people consumed music made it more special back then because you had to buy it or you could obviously listen on the radio but we weren't saturated with anything that we want to hear from any point in history at any time it's if it wasn't played on the radio we either had to own it ourselves or have somebody we could borrow it from so songs like that you know it's like they were special because each each show in each whatever had its own little catch for you know its own little catchy music so it's just the same as like if we loved the song we went out and bought it it's not like we're just going to stream it on spotify you know it's like everything was kind of encapsulated a little more so that there's a little sense. more quality control yeah i like that mm-hmm. agreed yeah See, I talked myself out of one of those circles. I started to talk myself into it. <laughs> How about you, Cass? What kind of early so, memories? So as Duff alluded to, having cable versus not, I didn't have cable when I was very little. Uh, we had, because there was a time when you could just subscribe to HBO. So we had regular <laughs> network TV and we had HBO and got to see movies like Pee Wee's Big Adventure there for the first time. Um, but then at some point, 
cable came along. It's like, oh, now we have cable. You know, didn't really know what it was. I just I remember kind of what the remote looked like. It was bigger than the regular TV remote, had all these other buttons. It's like, oh, what does this do? And it's like, oh, now there's more channels. And one of the channels that I found was Nickelodeon. And once you found Nickelodeon as a kid, that was all you needed. You could, you knew that you could come home from school and just put Nickelodeon on. And even if there's a show you weren't crazy about, maybe you didn't really pay attention. You went and did something else while it was on, but Nick was it. You you don't really need more stops than Nickelodeon. Unless there were other shows that you knew were going to be on, on another channel. Like if there's something you followed, you're like Disney afternoon or whatever, you knew it's like, that was the default. So you're going to veg out for a little bit. You're going to do whatever you're going to do. Nickelodeon. That's it. Lock it in. I think yeah. it was it was channel uh, for me growing up. It was channel twenty three. It's easy to remember. What? Because of Jordan? Yeah, I was just like yeah. twenty three. It's like I think it's Nickelodeon. Yeah. Oh god, I don't even know. I I got nothing. I feel like it was channel six on one service or twenty six or something. But those numbers were formulated and pulled directly out of my posterior just now. So. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't come up with an algorithm for that? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> yeah, I could go back in time and you know try to figure it out. But if, so if I'm not here for next episode, I'm stuck back in 1992 or something. <laughs> but um, so Nickelodeon, you were talking about scales, you and Tony being six years apart. And Nickelodeon had a pretty broad base, age base covered. It was, it was targeted only at kids, but there was stuff from young kids up until probably like mid teenage years. So there could have been shows that Tony watched too, but you guys wouldn't have really had much overlap. But a show like Double Dare, where it's a game show, of right. which there were quite a few, yes. those were ones that the entire family could watch together. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. The younger ones are still going to enjoy it more. Right. But you know, there is that shared sense there. Yeah, Double Dare was definitely that show. I had, We may have watched it as a family. I don't remember. Um, I just, I, like I said, I definitely remember watching that with my brother. It's just I mean, one of my favorites is classic, awesome yeah. show. I mean, and, they, and they even had family double there. Where right. Was, was, it, four, was it like four contestants on each team? Mm -hmm. or? Mark yeah. Summers. What a, yeah. what a, wow. I, I, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, I think Double Dare was really uh, what kind of reinvented Nickelodeon and kind of took it off the ground. It really kind of was like it's, you know, big thing back then in like the mid 80s when it kind of came out and yeah. um, kind of took it off the ground. Definitely. Then they, they did a lot of episodes as we mm -hmm. discovered going through some of this stuff on Paramount Plus. Yes. By the way, Double thank there. you once again, Kev. Yes. Oh, thank, th you. Th thank you to T-Mobile for the opportunity <laughs> to, to have this sponsor <laughs> service. <Yeah. laughs> but, you know, we've named a couple shows. Let's get into talking about some of them. So I have it's a list sweet. here. I'm going to continue. I'm just going to keep looking down at it, but. Do it. Yes, we want to keep the law and order here. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go through this list, a show at a time. I'll just call out the name and then, uh, you know, we'll talk about whatever comes to mind, you know, like it or music. spike it. Exactly. <laughs> so let's start with the live action shows. And I'm going to start with a little show called Salute Your Shorts. Mm. So let's go around yay or nay. Scales, do you like Salute Your Shorts? Yay. And Mr. Duff? Yay. I too, yay. <laughs> Love that show with Mr. Ugly. <laughs> oh. And the funny thing is, as a kid, I didn't get that that was supposed to be a joke. I just thought his name was Ugg. I didn't even Me too. Me too. I know. I know. <laughs> that went over after. my head too. Went over yeah. my head. Too. And then I was watching the pilot episode or just the first episode when Bug 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 <laughs> bud nick yeah. names him ugly because yeah. he says yeah. like my name's kevin lee he's like ugly uh, he's <laughs> yeah such, i had the same oh reaction. such a crappy bully oh yeah, yeah. yeah oh such a crappy bully so oh, he lips bud nick is a perfect example of when i was a kid <laughs> i couldn't differentiate between the actor and the role so i i saw the actor as bud nick and just assumed that he was an asshole 
And then, you know, <laughs> even if, even if I gave him a second chance, it's like, all right, I give him a second chance. But then I saw him in Terminator 2 robbing the ATM. I was like, all right, this guy's he's a bad guy. I don't want to watch just him in anything. Yeah, he's just a real jerk. <laughs> but we, we know someone that used to uh, do that. They used to do exactly what they did in Terminator 2. <laughs> yes, supposedly. Another filmmaker, actually. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't go down. Anyway. Um... <laughs> so I was going to say one thing about um, Salute Your Shorts. So... I think for me, it was, I mean, it's this age of TV for kids was obviously was presenting something a lot different than they did in the eighties and the seventies. It wasn't this like happy go lucky, leave it to beaver type stuff, right? It was getting more realistic type stories and characters and stuff. And this show was like, it wasn't always a happy ending. There was bullies. There was the good kids getting screwed over by a bully or getting treated like crap. Like you could relate to it. It was realistic. And I think yeah. that's, to me, it struck a chord. And even going back and watching it now is like, it's so, it's like, this could be your real life at a summer camp or wherever, you know, at school or like wherever it is, like these kind of situations are very realistic for when we were that Absolutely. age, nine, 10 years old. It's, it's funny that you say that because I took, I was starting to take notes when I was going through stuff and then just <laughs> completely stopped. And I was like, I oh, whatever, there's too many shows. But one of the <laughs> only notes I took was that Salute Your Shorts shows kids like they actually are as opposed to yeah. how they should be. Yeah. So there's not, like you said, there's not always a nice, nice, neatly wrapped up moral or whatever. You know, sometimes, <laughs> the bag, you know, the bad one gets the edge and sometimes not. Um, but then they even have dimensions. So there's an episode where Budnick, uh, you know, falls in love with Dina and Budnick is the bully for most of the show. And when he's not being a bully, he's kind of a swindler. He's always trying to pull one over on everybody. And he sings a song to her and gets humiliated. He actually gets a, a pie in the face, which was pretty <laughs> oh, in yes. front of in front of the entire cafeteria. <laughs> But then you know you're feeling badly for him, even though he's usually a jackass. And right. then later in later in the episode, you know she softens her stance to him, and you know he hangs out with her in the boat. And like I don't really remember what happens the next episode because it wasn't on Paramount Plus, and I don't remember yeah. when I was seven. But uh, why not? I, it's just one of those things that slipped. You know, memory <laughs> slips. Sometimes I forget things as I get older, and sometimes yeah. I forget things. Um, but Duff, what are some of your thoughts on salute your shorts? <laughs> You mentioned um, donkey lips. Well, yeah, I just I forgot, you know, his his character and at the full extent. But something I never really watched too much when I was younger, um, but kind of got into it a little bit later. Um, always remember hearing about it and kind of catching little bits and pieces here and there. But you know, like you know, we did with a bunch of shows. I gave it another watch. I watched a few episodes here and there. Um, and yeah, like you know, scales like you were saying, it's just it, it puts. You know, the kids in situations that were a lot more realistic. It wasn't like your full house or family matters where there was always a good wholesome thing right at the end, even though that show also had situations, but it wasn't, you know, someone sitting down at the end and you know that there was about a wholesome event that was going to happen because the music changed. Um, you know, this was kind of filmed on someone's home video for salute your shorts, you know, home camera, or whatever. It's like, what, it, like, what, is what did one of you say? What did one of you say that <laughs> the first episode, what'd you say about it? Scale? I said, I said it looked it like it was the first episode. It was more than that. It was yeah, like, I said, it looked like it was filmed with a, uh, like a layer of dust on the camera. lens. <laughs> yeah, it's like so foggy looking. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it, I don't know. I just also got the, the strangest vibe. Were there more than like, eight kids in camp it always looked like there was like only like a six to eight <laughs> kids in camp like how did this yeah. camp stay open well, it's, but you know, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's just it's just that core group except for in that first episode where all of a sudden this poor really nerdy kid is about to get awful <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like who did it it's like they're looking around the whole group and everybody just kind of parts <laughs> and all of a sudden this this kid with glasses is like <laughs> just do you know uh, that none of the actors knew yeah, I guess the the awful waffle never actually happened, and none of them knew what it was until later, much much later. Did you know that? <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, but isn't it that they poured syrup all over the kid? So they pour. So this is what the creator of the show said: is that it involved a tennis racket and syrup, and that's all he ever told the cast because <laughs> it never happened. Yeah, you, know, you can put your imagination to the yeah. rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I'm got to give mention to. Bud Nick's amazing mullet in season one. Oof. Oh yeah, classic. <laughs> um, but that as we talked like to Billy Ray Cyrus type mullet, right? Yeah. There. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
as we talked about in the intro, and we're going to have to talk about whenever we bring up one of these shows that has one theme song, yes. great theme song. You can't watch that show and not hear for the rest of your the rest of the day in your head. It makes me want to fart. Or, or, <laughs> yeah. uh, and what always bugged me about the the intro is that some of the actors sing it decently and others are yes. way way off oh, yeah. pitch mm-hmm. close to on time <laughs> it's per it it goes back to what we were saying it's that it's like it gives that normal natural vibe of what you would expect kids to be yeah, yeah it, uh, some that can sing and some that don't know what singing is yeah exactly is it, uh zz who's like she gets like distracted by a fly or something and she's like spacing out or something during it it might be it's <laughs> just <laughs> so funny and- as I mentioned to you guys, aside, <laughs> the uh, was Pinsky, I think is the character's name, but when uh, he's the one with the baseball glove in the beginning, yes, gets me every time watching. It's, it's like, hysterical. Can't, can't like kind of <laughs> the ball just goes <laughs> nowhere near him. He's just like <laughs> kind of pats the glove. Just no come cells on. that he completely missed it. <laughs> <laughs> it was nowhere close to him. It was like, come on, it's like if you're playing errors, it's like that one's on you. <laughs> and that, so I looked that guy up. He formed a band with another child star that i'm sure you know from wizard fame jenny lewis they were both in rilo kylie he was mm-hmm. the guitarist in rilo kylie really they were uh, you know, affirmative indie, yeah very wow. popular indie rock band mm-hmm. interesting I, didn't I? Yeah, I feel like yeah yeah how about that yeah how about that <laughs> well moving on to our next show that would be oh boy Uh-oh. oh boy tune. he's oh got boy. props I knew it was going to do it. <laughs> Try again. Hey, dude. <laughs> no. Nice. No, no, that was awesome. Bring out the prop. Yeah, that was I good. I knew I was going to screw it up on the first try. but Mr. Ernst hey, would be dude. proud. Hey, dude. Yeah. <laughs> He's very proud. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah no, okay. Till the break of day. <laughs> Better watch out for those man-eating jackrabbits and those killer cacti. <laughs> what exactly is a man-eating jackrabbit or yeah. a killer cacti? I don't, I don't want to know. Not find I've, out. Seen, no, thank I've you. seen cacti. I've seen jackrabbits. I've never been afraid of being eaten or killed by either. How big unless is a jackrabbit? Unless it's, unless it's Pokey <laughs> from Super Mario Brothers 2. Uh, <laughs> he's a killer. it is. He's he's a killer. Killer. They move. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, another show. So it also like salute your shorts shows things kind of how they are, not how they should be. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say maybe not as realistic because maybe because of the setting, you're know, like most of us, I'd say all of us probably went to camp at some point, be it sleep away or, or day camp. I don't think many of us have worked on a dude ranch before. So the setting is a little <laughs> different uh, uh scales no, i, know I don't really have, have one had some experience yeah. <laughs> yeah my dude ranch days yeah yeah well scales i know you used to walk around in boots and spurs but that doesn't really count <laughs> yeah and that you know the, the, out in the, the deserts of west haven connecticut you know, <laughs> <had> a, had <laughs> <laughs> but um so going back and revisiting hey dude mm-hmm. it took me a couple episodes to sink back in and enjoy it i watched the first one i was like this is yeah, they're a little rough. Remember, yeah, the yep. the acting wasn't really so great, and I had I've had some of these shows on the TV. You know, like I, I watched a lot of them, you know, kind of quietly. But times when I watched it, and Taylor could hear, she's like, "I just like I don't like the show. Like the acting is terrible. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I can't really disagree. I I like the show, but yeah, the acting's not on point right away. Mm-hmm. But um, the my only issue with Hey Dude, because I as I watched more mm-hmm. and more episodes. I was really enjoying it. Like it's just putting me in a good mood thinking about this is what I would watch when I was home from school. You know, just doing whatever. Um, the cast got a little big and I got confused as to who was supposed to be what, because I, I try to get a smattering of episodes and I just didn't, I couldn't figure out who was supposed smattering. to be. Yeah, smattering. Like <laughs> Ted, Ted's there, then he's not, then he's back again. Um, Nugent? What? Nugent? Yeah, Ted Nugent. <laughs> <laughs> who, who? Uh, see, I only watched like the pilot. Um, okay, you went for, you went pretty far. It sounds like so. Like, how, who other? What other characters came in? I don't remember other big uh, characters. Mister uh, Ernst's nephew, Jake, I think, and then there's another one, Kyle. Mm. Um, 
I think maybe they got brought aboard when Ted left for a little bit. Okay. Um, What's her name? Ben Stiller's wife is in that. What's her? uh... Christine Taylor. Yes. Yes. Melody. Yes. Looking good. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Yes. It was a very early childhood crush right there. (laughs) Yeah. Even Um, even even Brad was a looker when I was a kid. Yeah. I couldn't appreciate her when I was younger, though. Yeah. I think part of it was because I just didn't understand why her name was Bradley. I've never heard of a girl named. Bradley. Yeah, that's true. I think I was that, that, that has something to do with it. Yeah. Do you, Scales, do you remember Lou Albano was in an episode of Hey? No. no yeah. I all, all I remember is that he gave Danny grapefruit juice to drink and it was sour or spoiled and <laughs> Lou Albano starts laughing is basically like, oh, you know, it'll, it'll toughen you up or something, huh. <laughs> something crazy. And it was wrestling related. Like he was in the ring. I didn't look for it on Paramount. I have to see if they have it. But oh, yeah. I'm going to go from being a kid. I don't remember that. I'm going to have to go look. I don't think I've ever seen that. Actually, I'm going to go look that up now. <laughs> That's great. Did you know that but, that show was shot actually on look or, you know, in Tucson, uh, I don't know how to say Tucson, Arizona? So Tucson? it was actually shot in a yeah Tucson. There you go, Tucson. Yeah. <laughs> Tucson. 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 Yeah, Tucson. it's in this place. I don't think you've heard of it. It's Tucks in <laughs> at a at a real uh, ranch. I guess they Tucson. there was a real ranch that people could stay at. Um, but then they like kind of built the set off the side, still on the grounds of the ranch for that. So I thought that was pretty cool. You can go. Yeah. You can't go to the set because it's probably gone now. But you can go to the actual ranch where yeah. where they filmed it. Cool. One thing with <clears throat> Hey Dude, it's like I, f- I feel like every storyline is somehow the guys and the girls fighting with each other, conspiring about something. Who's better at this? Who's better at that? That's what yes. well, the one I saw was like Battle of the Sexes or something. Yeah, they made a couple comments in there where I'm like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. It's like one of the, yeah, the characters or whatever. It's like, yeah, you know, women just belong in the kitchen or something along those lines. And yes, I was like, I saw that. Yeah, the, I was like, uh, obviously, yeah. obviously, they're going to win the baking competition. <laughs> yeah, but oh. something along those lines. I was like, Gee. and then there. Melody made a tuna casserole or something and refused <laughs> <laughs> <Fail>. to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we get yays all around for that one. Yeah. yeah. Yay. Yeah. All right. All right. So again, acting, mm, but. That yeah. comes with some of these shows, as we know. Yeah, but sometimes <laughs> it takes a little while for them to settle into the roles, too, and the actors and actresses get better as time goes on, which yeah. seemed to be the case. Um, Clarissa explains it all. Mm. So this one's a little different because it was mainly on SNCC, but I believe they showed reruns during the day. Yeah, so yes. what did you guys think of Clarissa explains it all? Weird thumbs theme up. song, but thumbs up. A weird, very weird theme song. Like literally, it's just na 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 na. All right, all right, and just do it. But another one that'll get stuck in your head. Is this the same guy that did like you know like I know I'm ripping off of what's his name the comedian, the guy who always talks about bacon and food. Drawing blank. He makes fun of the hot pocket thing, and he's like, oh yes, yes. You know who I'm talking about? Uh, I know you're ta- yeah, I'm blanking out of the name. I know you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, but basically, yeah. I wonder if the same guy who created the hot bucket is the same guy that did this. I don't know. Probably. That's where I was, that's I where I was going with this. I don't know. But it is, it is a good theme song. Regardless of how silly it is, it's another one to get stuck in your head. Yes. It's true. But it's just, uh, really? <laughs> I don't know. I got to break the prop out one more time. <laughs> yes. Just because. All right. Wait, the ladder, the ladder is coming up, and it slams into the window, and... Hi, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Forget Sam. Uh, if you put Sam, I forget the actor's name, and Ryder Strong next to each other. Oh, my God. Gonna, yeah. I don't know who's who. No, that's a good one. <laughs> I didn't think of that. Yeah. I also, uh, I feel like the father is a poor man's Phil Hartman. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. The dad, I feel like, is always right, just getting Phil dumped Hartman, on. Obviously, though, but yeah, yes, Phil Hartman's yeah. the man. Yeah, the dad's always getting dumped on. Yeah, uh, I, got, I watched two different episodes. I had to check to make sure that they're actually separate. Where the mother was talking about an old boyfriend, and like he was worried that she was interested <laughs> in him. Still, two different ones from two different seasons. It's like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> this this poor bastard just like <laughs> like getting yeah. dumped all the time. The one then, I, I watch, I watched the pilot. Or he's just trying to get one of his kids to go play basketball with him in the driveway, and they're 
Clarissa's like, you know, she has better things to do in her, in her room. Yeah. And, and Ferguson's sure like, he's studying for a, for a test or something. This poor dad just wants to hang out with his kids. <laughs> I mean, she really needs to work on some better insults for Ferguson, though. Like, Ferg face. Ferg, Ferg what? Breath. Ferg, like, really? Come on. That's not... If only it had been a few years later, she could have called him Turd Ferguson. And the, funny, <laughs> oh, yeah. the funny thing is, I didn't even make that connection. I was watching the show. I was like, Ferguson's such a turd. And then as soon as I finished thinking, I was like, Turd Ferguson, like it fits so perfectly. Ferguson Darling. Sounds like the worst name in yeah. history. Yeah. Ferguson Darling, yes. The Oof. Berg. But were, were you, you guys were and, were you fans? Were, like, did you like the show? Like, were you yeah. did you look forward to watching it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I watch it. Yeah. 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 I will admit though, they are ama- she is an amazing computer programmer. Like yeah. she'd always go to those side things and they'd have, oh, let me try this new game that I just made. And it's yeah. like, whoa, why are yeah. you not like creating video games right now? Why are you still in school? <laughs> I was thinking of the same thing, and I got <laughs> super excited when I watched, went back and watched an episode because I like had vague memories of like she'd always have these cool video games on her computer mm-hmm. somehow, and I was like, "Wow, these yeah. are as cool as I remember!" Like, how did you program this? What did you I know. do this? It's TV. There was no yes. internet in 1992. Television. <laughs> <laughs> and another another example of as a kid watching an actor or an actress in a role and just associating her with that from then on anytime i saw melissa joan hart and anything else it's like all right clarissa i know who you really are <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good ground i think groundbreaking show in, in a couple different ways um obviously the the breaking the fourth wall wasn't the first time that was done I like zach morris would do that on saved by the bell too but mm-hmm. i always that's a cool aspect of a show you feel you're connected to the character more and then i feel like her her character as a, a young girl um, although maybe we didn't connect to her in that sense, but the fact that she was maybe like one of the first girls in a, in a show like this, that wasn't a prototypical girl. She wasn't waiting for the boy to call. She wasn't, right. you know, looking to go on a date. Like she was just, no, we're, yeah. we're really getting into it here. Yeah. I mean, but. she was just like a cool, like you could got, got boys and girls could relate to her. That's what I'm trying to say, right. I guess, is that it wasn't just no, a girl, yeah. girl show. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it was something that we would watch too, and we were like interested in too. So, right, yeah. right, yeah, yeah, had crossover appeal for sure. Yeah, yeah, it was a good one. Let's see, I'm gonna name one kind of quickly. Wienerville. Did you guys mm. watch it or no? Negative. I don't. I don't remember it too much. I remember the show, but I don't remember seeing it. I just. I don't know. I remember a few things about it. So. I remember the theme song was a little was a little was like, uh, "What's up? What's up?" in Wienerville, Wienerville, Wienerville <laughs> at the end of it. Um, and I, it was, there were different segments, but I know that at one point, I think uh, if you got picked from the crowd, you got to go on stage and you got wienerized and you were a head on top of, you know, like a shrunken body. You know, I think that I guess your hands would control the feet or whatever. And you played a game. Usually it was like shooting someone with, you know, silly string or whipped cream or something, whatever it was. Um, uh, and maybe you got slimed. Like it, it was just a, it was a silly show, but I I enjoyed that one. But I figured you guys didn't really watch that yeah. one that much. That was no, really one of the popular ones. I remember like the head, like in the like for some reason I was thinking it had puppets, but now that you said the head with the little feet, like that rings a bell. But I don't remember there being mm-hmm. like there was a crowd there. People would go on stage. It was like, I, I I think so. That's okay. that's from the best of my memory. Yeah. But Mark Wiener was the guy. You know, who created the show and yep. started it and he did a lot of those characters with the what looks like puppets hmm. Hmm. i thought you were going to say something duff no i i got nothing to say other than okay. hmm. we know <laughs> checked off the That's list he said <laughs> <laughs> right, so having mentioned slime on wienerville I just want to talk quickly about Nickelodeon Studios in Orlando, Florida. Now, Scales, you took a trip there when you were younger, right? Yes, I did. So um, tell us a little about it. Yeah, sure. So pretty sure it was like 90, October 93. So I'd have been eight years old. So like right in the wheelhouse of um, loving Nickel- loving every second of Nickelodeon and everything about it. Um, and I remember, I remember the building. I remember going in there. I remember um, going on this tour and being to... Um, they would take you up like to the second floor and you would look down and you would see the sets of whatever shows they were filming at that, at that time. And at the time I was there, I definitely remember seeing the guts stage, which was like, holy cow. Like that yeah. was just like, 
that was like my favorite one, <clears throat> maybe my favorite game show on Nickelodeon at the time. And that's like crazy seeing the, the whole stage and everything. Um, and then I remember um, Welcome Freshman, which I wasn't a huge fan of, but it was uh, being filmed during that time. And I remember seeing the, they were talking about the, the, the set for that, um, that show. And then uh, as you exit the tour, as you were leaving the tour part of, of this uh seeing the stages and stuff they would take you to a game show that you were a part of and um i don't have uh much recollection of that um but maybe maybe you do cast <laughs> yeah i don't really remember that it's funny because i went to nickelodeon studios too i don't remember seeing any of the sets or anything like that the only thing i remember was they asked for somebody who would be a slime and gack taster and i immediately raised my hand i was like five or six years old and i got to taste the slime that they would drop on people in the gack and the slime is just applesauce with green food coloring and the gack really? is butterscotch flavor um i uh, think wow. the uh applesauce oatmeal and vanilla pudding is what i oh. saw so i don't know if it was different when they made it for you but it's it's entirely possible. I'm sure they changed it a bunch of times because whatever they gave me was applesauce flavor. And they you said sure it wasn't was applesauce. green colored mustard. It <laughs> wasn't green colored mustard. But <laughs> the what did you say? Oatmeal and uh, uh, pudding oatmeal, as well? Oatmeal, vanilla pudding. <clears throat> um, <laughs> and uh, green, yeah, just green food coloring, oatmeal, applesauce, and vanilla. vanilla. So, yeah. I think that they would probably use different variations on the slime because when you look at it, sometimes it's a little more watery and then other times it's very thick, like what you just mentioned, that the pudding would definitely factor into that. I think uh, they shipped it in from a place, um, what was it called? Uh, Tucson, Arizona. <laughs> Tucson. <laughs> Tucson. <laughs> it was on the dude ranch. <laughs> nice. Well done. Duff, did you ever go there or no? I did not. No, never did. Um, I would see, you know, that was a, place that i wanted to go but you know you'd see like you know it would always like what was it at the end was it at the end they would say film before you know a live studio audience at yeah. universal studios florida and they would show the picture from the outside i'm like oh my god i want to go with there. the the geyser that would uh, yeah. shoot out the slime or yeah, uh, yeah it's like it was so cool liquid. i was like oh i want to go there but never ended up going there and i don't yeah. does it exist anymore or is it like turned into something else or it's do you don't know what they film i think the that building, building is now? still there right the building is there and that's okay. where they do the Blue Man Group show at Universal Studios. What a letdown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah poor, poor Joe only got to go to Universal Studios Tucson. <laughs> it's a much smaller version. <laughs> um, but coming out of talking about Slime and Gak, uh, even though it's a show none of us really watched, it was still the pioneer and it's the show that gave Nickelodeon its start. <clears throat> you can't do that on television. Um, I remember watching it a little bit, but I don't really remember much ab about it. For The only thought that stuck in my head with you can't do that on television other than the guy screaming and getting shattered in the intro is dirty food. And I couldn't really place why. And then I watched an episode or half an episode and there was a place where there was food they were serving food and it was dirty so it pretty much lined up with what i thought about the show yeah. um but yeah i know that they used slime on that show um and it was you know, just like a very irreverent kid show it's pretty canadian like a lot of nickelodeon stuff is in retrospect yeah. which is nothing wrong with it it's just very funny like what you notice as you're older and you know, talking about yeah exactly <laughs> i'm sorry to bring it up uh, <laughs> um Wait, did you guys watch that show at all or any recollection of it? I know my older brother and sister did, but they would yeah. make little mentions to it here and yeah. there about like some like comments with things that I'm like, it was just a little bit past my time. Yeah, same. You know, I remember I remember Tony talking about it, but I have like I remember the intro, like you said, cast, but yeah. I have very, very vague memories of the show itself. Yes. Yeah, because it was it's not even something that was on a lot where we could just decide not to watch it. It just wasn't played that often. So mm -hmm. I yeah. feel like there weren't as many chances for us to watch it. Um you know who did get her start there or who was on an episode speaking of canadian is alanis morissette she was in a few oh episodes. yeah I, i've heard that before i never yeah. saw her on it but i do know no. she was in it yeah i've heard that well, do you know that <laughs> do you know that um 
So this, I was watching this. Uh, what Duff say? I was just saying, come in full circle. I mean, we're you know, I could. I'm just going to go down the rabbit hole. You know, Full House, Dave Coulier. Oh, Dave Coulier. Coulier yes. She wrote a song about him. It's ironic, isn't it? <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we uh, side scales. I was saying yeah. that this. So I, I think I this. Watched... It's, it's the, you told us is something you want to know. <laughs> yes, you ought to know. I got one hand in my pocket while I'm telling you this. Um, <laughs> I'm, done. I'm done, I promise. Done. <laughs> this show, you can't do that on television. Um, I was watching the the documentary on Nickelodeon. It's called The Orange Years. It's on Hulu. Uh, people should go check that out. They would appreciate it. And they were telling a story about the show and how when they pitched, when this, so this show was like, uh, wasn't affiliated with Nickelodeon. I think they kind of purchased the rights to air it. But when wh- whoever was the whoever was behind the show, when they were pitching it to the company, and they were telling them all this crazy stuff that they're going to make these kids do on the show, and, and the, these big wigs are like, "You can't do that on television." And that's where the name of the show came from. Okay, clever. Yeah, I, I okay. hope that's exactly how they said it too. Yeah, <laughs> it is. I picture yeah. these old ratchet old men. You can't do that on television. Exactly. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, let's see. All right. All that. Mm-hmm. I did not watch all that. I wasn't a Ooh. fan. I know scales you were, so that I give the reins to you. Yeah. I give the reins to you probably for the next couple shows because yeah, I didn't really I didn't really watch it either bits and pieces really? here and there. I just it was another one that I just never really got into. Like I knew some of the characters. I knew yeah. and I, I did see like a little random piece, like I guess one of the uh the writers for the show actually went on to do a uh, Chappelle show. I don't know. Oh, I didn't know I, like, that. I saw that. It was like, oh, that's kind of a cool connection. But yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, I, I can't remember the guy's name, but I saw that little. Interesting. Bit. I never knew that. All right. Yeah, yeah. I was a big fan of all that. Um, Keenan and Kel. Keenan and Kel. Um, Lori Beth Denberg. Um, Amanda Bynes <laughs> came on in like the later years. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just, I don't know. I always found it hysterical as a kid. It was like you know, in living color slash SNL for our age group, um, yeah. sketch comedy. And they always had a cool, um, music act at the end, musical act. Like they had rappers on there, like Coolio, Nas, they had TLC, or good, like good R and B artists. Like it was just, I don't know, it was a hip, cool show for like little nine, 10 year old Steve. I just, I loved it. It yeah. was hysterical. And, and I sent you guys the, the episode that I didn't even know that Chris Farley did a skit on the show. So I went and that's one of the episodes on Paramount plus. And I went back and watched that. And of course it's just ridiculous and hysterical. Yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a looney tune himself. Cranked up, to, cranked up to uh, 11,000. Yeah. 11,000 million. In a van <laughs> down by the river. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, again, I didn't really watch it. I knew of a few skits like super dude was okay. Yep. Um, repair man, repair man, 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 man. Um, but then when Good Burger came out, I wanted, I saw that in the yeah. theater, enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed Good Burger too, yeah. yeah. And that was when that a Nickelodeon production too. Yeah. Was that yeah? That was made by yeah. Yeah. I and mean, I I only saw it because Sinbad was in it, and Sinbad's the man. But or uh, what's uh oh, what's the old dude's name that was uh oh, Abe Vigoda. Abe Vigoda, yeah, he was in there too. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, losing my train of thought here. Oh, Keenan. I liked Keenan and Mighty Ducks too, and then for some reason he started to bother me. Like I liked the Mighty Ducks too, really? with heavyweights, but when he was on all that, something about him irked me. I don't really know what it was. And then once he got older, I liked him again. I don't know why. I I think just because I didn't like all that for whatever reason, it just didn't resonate. Interesting. I think it's. I mean, yeah, I think it's so cool. Like Keenan Thompson yeah. that he's on SNL. To, uh, yeah, he's just, had a hell of a career. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. really kind of come on, and I don't know. He like there was a period of time where I don't know what he was doing in between. I don't know if he was writing or doing stuff behind the scenes, but right, yeah, he's yeah. really he's really come back and you know the focus. And he's like doing all sorts of stuff now. So yeah, yeah. props props to him. Yeah, it, se- it seemed like of the. No, two, I think it started man. started with the knuckle puck. I think yeah, it's hard yeah. to get accurate. But jumping off that, um, so we'll. Because I was going to mention Kel Mitchell, but did you watch Keenan and Kel Scales? Uh, a little bit. Um, I don't have as vivid memory of uh, Keenan and Kel as I do of all that. Like I, 
I feel like some of their skits may have crossed over, like, you know, to Kel with the, who loves orange soda? I do, I do, I do. Who? I feel like that was in both shows, but that was a prominent part of uh, yeah. Keenan and Kel. Um, but yeah, I, I was definitely a fan of that. I just don't have vivid memories of it. It seemed like Kel was going to be the one to blow up and be the biggest star of the two, but yes. not at all. He just kind yeah. of disappeared. And, and yeah, Keenan Thompson yeah. will yeah. tell you that, um, like, Kel Mitchell is like the funniest dude that Keenan Thompson has ever met in his entire life. So yeah. I feel like maybe he just, I don't even know what Kel Mitchell is up to these Wasn't days. Wasn't there but a feud between both of them or something? Or, or am I, I just making that out? Like, I thought I read that like they didn't get along after a certain point. Yeah. Funny. I think I've read both. I've read both things that they did. They didn't. I don't know. But it's probably a I, BuzzFeed I, thing that I read, you know, it's whatever. Yeah. It's like top yeah. Top I looked 10 up Kel and have a feud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I looked up Kel before, you know, like sometime over the past week, just when we we're looking up these episodes and these shows. And yep. I think he's some kind of a minister or a pastor. Or oh, nice. Something like that. Yeah. Um, as of as of late. So I don't yeah. know when that started. Um, and then so what, were both of those on or at least all that was on SNCC, right? All that was on SNCC. And Keenan and Kel, I think, was on SNCC like later like it wasn't on the initial yeah. run but it came later yeah so did you watch at all the show that all that replaced which was roundhouse i did not um and, and i've always heard of it but i've never seen an episode of it yeah there was another one i just i didn't really have much interest in yeah. like i that either yeah I, on snick i liked clarissa and i liked ren and stimpy and are you afraid of the dark but I feel like Roundhouse was and all that were some stuck somewhere in between. I don't remember the order of the episodes of yeah. uh, the programming. You know what would have like, been I, better watched... than Roundhouse? Roadhouse. Oh, I thought you were going to say a Roundhouse kick by Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, What's Roadhouse? What? Roadhouse, What's the movie? movie? Yeah. Who was that? Patrick Swayze. Roadhouse. I well, know who he is. I don't know what the movie is. Oh, man. Dirk's going to oh, be boy. slamming his phone against the floor. When he sees <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and I'm out. <laughs> Duffy's gone. All right. I was going to say, imagine his, his camera didn't come back on. <laughs> Let's see. So the last one, the last show that we'll have a bit to say about, we already brought up in a prior episode, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Um, love that show. Yes. Uh, just because I love all things horror, as we mentioned in the Halloween episode. Um, another show that's quite Canadian when you look back at it, <laughs> like the <laughs> acting and the accents is pretty <laughs> funny. But uh, I watched uh, a couple of days ago the Zebo the Clown. So was it the, 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 the laughing in the dark? Laughing in I the watched, dark. I watched that one too. That one. Not gonna lie, that one's. I don't it's like clowns. And they did, I thought they always did a good job, even though the acting and stuff was kind of cheesy in certain moments, they, uh, some of them had good, you know, spooky moments to it. Even like, I don't know, I thought the opening, the opening like scene, the opening credits or whatever, I thought yes. that was pretty well done. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, it's just, yeah. it had a creepy vibe to it. Like the, the way that it was kind of like filmed and like the overcast, whatever look to it. And it was kind of cool, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It was and even also, like the opening with the, the flame, the match, and like, you know, the, I don't know, it's just cool. Job. And like Scale said in the Halloween episode, <laughs> that you feel like you're part of the Midnight Society because of the way mm -hmm. it's filmed around the campfire. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you guys know what was in the, the dust or powder that would make the fire like explode at the beginning of the episode? I think okay. it's what they had. <laughs> I say cocaine. It's a hell of a drug. <laughs> I think it's what they used to cover the lens with in uh, Salute Your Shadow. Oh, yeah, yes, it might have been. True. Yeah, it was. It was coffee was... mate. Apparently, powdered oh, wow. coffee, really? coffee mate. Yeah. Coffee mate. Was that yeah, shit from Tuxin? Yeah, yeah, that came from <laughs> Tuxin as well. Mister Ernst shipped that right out of the the, the Tanka Verde Ranch. Yes. <laughs> Tanka Verde. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real name of the ranch. I didn't pull it out of my ass. <laughs> I was like, what show is that from? Like, and you made me think, it's like, is it something close to Tanker? I was like, no, it's Bar None. What's he talking about? <laughs> Very interesting. Um, one show that I wasn't planning on bringing up, but I got to throw it in there. Five W's with Linda Ellerby. Ever watch it? Oh, <laughs> yes. Nick, or like Nick News. Oh, I don't know that Nick one. News. Yeah, it was Nick, Nick News. News. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Nick News. 
the only thing I could say about it is it taught me what the five W's were. I don't remember yes. really watching any episodes, but yes. uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So we've got a couple, just a few more live action ones that we'll breeze through right here. Pete and Pete, the adventures of Pete and Pete. That gets a thumbs down from me. Yeah. It just, I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. I just never watched it. I, don't, I never really got into it. I don't know. Never gave it a chance maybe, but it just didn't really vibe with me. I don't know. Yeah. Same. I just never, you guys never, really, never really got what was going on. And it's one of those shows where I felt like I was on the outside with it, where other people liked it. And I just, I didn't get it. Is yeah. it like Joe, like Joe at Seinfeld. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Same, same. Yeah. I never, never yeah. got into it. Never understood why people. And it perfect strangers. It. Yeah. Yeah, well, as I established in a throwdown, you're a schmuck. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but Scales, you're somewhat familiar with Seinfeld. Do you remember the episode where Elaine breaks up with Putty and she starts dating a guy and he ends up being the pitch man for uh, Nobody Beats the Whiz? Uh, I'm the Whiz and Nobody Beats Me. That oh, guy. is that Artie? Yeah, he's Artie, the shortest man in the world. Yes. <laughs> That's funny. Yes, yeah, so is that little tie in? Yeah. All right. The Secret World of Alex Mack. Yeah, watch the fan. Yeah, I maybe watch like two, three episodes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was a good show. Is I think it was one of those. I just I was never around when it was on, or I didn't mm-hmm. know when it was on. But I just somehow never caught it, other than an episode or two. Yeah. I remember a little was bit on, about it, but I remember that, liking it when I watched it. Yeah, yeah that was on SNCC for a little bit. Okay. So I remember watching it on SNCC. And, Do you remember uh, and? <laughs> The first episode when she when she morphed she morphed back naked like behind, she was like behind stuff obviously but like they never did that again in any other episode they were like how are you gonna do this every episode when she morphs <laughs> also what was she like 14 yeah exactly it's like yeah. probably some so uncomfortable like why did they even write that <laughs> yeah that's that's a little Canadians. unsettling yeah yeah exactly <laughs> she, she was also probably another like crush for oh yeah yeah kids. definitely yeah. i'm gonna butcher her and larissa olink olenic yeah the, the, mm. yeah it's one of those names that anytime i saw it i got intimidated halfway through and i was like i'm never gonna try to say this out loud and no i just she, no, she's not the same one that was in uh what 12 things i hate about you or is that the same am i thinking of the same person i don't know i've never seen it she's in 11 things i hate about you really mm. the prequel yeah the prequel <laughs> she might be i don't know i know she's been in other stuff i just okay. i only really know her as alex mack the last one i'm gonna throw in here which we probably never watched the mystery files of shelby Wu. Mm-hmm. just felt like saying the name because it's <laughs> i remember it's being excited hearing about it when it came out i was like oh that's a show that i would want to watch never saw an episode again probably never knew when it was on wasn't home whatever it was but shelby Wu, shelby who yeah yeah, we're yeah five five W's. She's Shelby five W's with Linda Ellis. <laughs> what, where, when, and why? Oh, well, my <laughs> mistake. Um, but as so, something I want to say about those. Well, I'll I'll, I'll say it later because uh, I want to tie it into. We're going to talk about Nicktoons in a couple minutes, but uh, I'm going to save my comment for then. So. In addition to live action sitcom style shows, Nickelodeon was well known and very highly regarded for a bunch of their cartoons, which we affectionately know as Nicktoons. Now, I'm going to go right into my favorite of the bunch. Good old Doug. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Many many thumbs up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes. Mr. Mr. Quailman himself, Duff, hmm. why don't you let us know, what do you think about Doug? It's great. The end. Yeah, that's <laughs> scary. Uh, no, I, it's, uh, yeah, it was, it was just one of those that I definitely had to watch. Um, you know, before, before it went over, I think it went to Disney or something after a while. And, like, they changed a bunch of stuff. I think it was, I think it was on ABC, which is ABC. Disney. Yeah. 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 It just changed. But before that, the good stuff, you yeah, know, the, the original Oliver run. Burger, the yeah. Like, you know, when Skeeter actually had the correct shirt on. Um, yeah. It was just like, I don't know. It was different kind of characters, you know, all sorts of different shapes and sizes. And it was a, basically, you know, kid kind of going, you know, moving into a new neighborhood, um, Bluffington. And, uh, you know, his like 
coming across, like making new friends, making a best friend Skeeter and running into bullies, you know, with Roger Klotz, um, you know, finding a girl they had a crush on with Wendy. And it was just like kind of following along, like, you know, what another kid might be going through that would be uh, moving to a new town. But um, just some of the voices and the sounds that these characters would make were all great, um, you know, outlandish type things that would be going on with them. But and yeah, it was just like, you know, him and his like little side stories and his side characters that he would turn into and he'd have to write in his journal every night. It's just it was a lot of stuff going on, but I, I don't know. I always enjoyed it. I always enjoyed kind of just making fun of the sounds that the characters would make, which uh, I know we've done a few times over the years together. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get our initial thoughts out that we're just going to dive in. We're going to do a bunch of impressions. So <laughs> get ready for it. Um, <laughs> And that's uh, Wendy, better known as Patty, right? Oh, why did I say? <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking of Wendy Peppercorn, I think. Maybe I think brain. I got I got Sandlot on the brain. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Patty, um, Patty, Patty mayonnaise. What am I doing? Yes, of course. Scales. <laughs> Wendy Peppercorn. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I love Doug. Doug was like you know, another one that was just so relatable. Like. He wasn't the most popular, but he wasn't really a nerdy guy. He was just kind of in the middle, but he always had like something like always going wrong. It's like, God yeah. dang it. Not again, Doug. Come on. How did you get yourself into this? How did you do that? So I was watching, a, I went back and watched an episode and it was called, um, it's like Doug hulks up or, or beefs up. Like he was training for this, uh, to, to, to do this. They had this Arnold Schwarzenegger type character. I forgot the guy's name it was like Harold oh. Lieberstein or something. He <laughs> like he talked like Arnold and he was like uh, doing all these Arnold type things. And Doug's trying to, you know, obviously win Patty's heart by showing her how strong he is. And he had all these, uh, you know, he's daydreaming about like, he was like jacked up and huge and like lifting up people on his arms and stuff. And uh, he eventually like, he gets hurt twice. He, he drops a barbell on his foot. So he's got a cast on his foot. And then he tries to do the rope climb and he like slides down and his hands are all burned up, but he eventually ends up winning a, a sit-up contest. He does like something ridiculous, like 405 sit-ups and like oh, nonstop. Familiar. Yeah. And he wins. I'm and then Patty, you know, he like, Patty's like starstruck, you know, the hearts are coming <laughs> out of her eyes and he's like so excited. <laughs> Once you said the sit-ups, I remember that. Oh yeah. 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 Do you, um, so, I, I just one tidbit before I pass it or cast for you, take it back. Um, so Patty Mayonnaise, obviously a super weird name. Do either you know how the writer came up with her or what, how he got that name? I I read about it, but okay. Like the mayonnaise. Dude, so he was looking for he he was struggling finding a voice actor for that character, and he was at home watching TV, and a uh, I believe it was Kraft Mayonnaise commercial was playing. It. And he just heard a voice. He's like, oh my God, that's it. And that was, I forget the <laughs> actress's name, but that Justin was the one he picked. Shulman. There you go. <laughs> yeah. She was on, uh, in a live action role on uh, Orange is the New Black. Oh, okay. Nice. I oh, that's right. Still great. A couple seasons that I forget, forget the character's name. She's very quirky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. From a mayonnaise commercial. Yeah. All <laughs> um, right. So my thoughts on Doug this time around. And so, like you guys said, he's, he's kind of an everyman. Um, he's Boy. not, he's not great. He's not bad really at anything. You know, he's, he's fairly bright. Uh, he's somebody that everybody can relate to. Um, so my two takeaways. Didn't remember that. Yeah. Remember he tried to start a band. I don't know. He made a music video and everything. And then it got like mixed up with uh, Mr. Bones yodeling video or something. <laughs> And then Patty ended up, he was nervous that Patty was having a sleepover and that she was going to see a video where he was like playing the banjo saying that he was in love with her or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah went off on a tangent. There you go. That's okay. Um, so I feel like he was, even though Charlie Brown was still around, he's kind of a Charlie Brown for our generation. You know, the somewhat inept and although not as depressed as Charlie Brown can be, still has a lot of the attendant paranoia, you know, like all the daydreams and a lot of his daydreams. It's like they're 50, 50. Sometimes it goes really great and he's all amped up. And other times it's just how things could go horribly wrong. Um, that's a good so call. I never thought of him as a Charlie Brown, but that's like spot on. That's really, yeah. nice. it didn't, didn't occur to me until I was watching it yeah. this time around. Sure, um, same haircut then, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the other thing is that a lot of Nickelodeon shows are pretty white in general like the the characters and in doug color doesn't matter you know mm -hmm. doug 
Doug has, you know, skin similar to ours, but he's one of the only ones on the show. Like, even in his own family, his parents have different color skin and they're all not even all, but like a lot of them are skin colors that don't exist among other people. So it's just showing that like, and there was no, not that I can remember any sort of judgment based on what anybody else looked like. It's, it's possible that it's in episodes I don't remember, but I thought that was cool. It was just kind of like everybody, it doesn't really matter what you look like. Everybody's in the same boat. Like you are yeah, who you are, absolutely. not because of what you look like, just because of you know how you act. You know, Roger is a jerk. But it's not like all the green characters on the show are jerks, right? You know, yeah, so that's a good call. Roger likes cats, though, so it's okay. He what? He likes cats. Yeah, that's that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking as someone who has two cats, um, exactly. But we got to dive into some impressions here because this is something. <laughs> this is something yeah. that our insane room in our townhouse was known for, you know, especially at like midnight one o'clock two o'clock in the morning everybody's trying to scream everybody's trying to sleep and we have screaming coming from another room that it's quiet hours <laughs> to shut up um but yeah sometimes doug impressions would come up so you know it might be lying down in bed it's dead quiet and you hear oh hey doug <laughs> or you might hear oh, bars, bars. <laughs> that being a little sound that they would make yeah even like the sound of all their cars it was like <laughs> it's like was this guy who wrote the thing was he like a fan of the jetsons or something <laughs> i was just gonna say something like the what jetsons. the hell was that who yeah <laughs> <laughs> what about uh who does a mr dink we both I think tried. You got okay. that. yeah go, you, go you got it. it better sorry douglas <laughs> oh hi <yeah>, douglas <laughs> <laughs> And Mr. Bone, I don't think I ever tried to do his impression, but uh, I was convinced I, I was convinced that Don Knotts did his voice. And then obviously he was <laughs> <laughs> he was the inspiration for his voice. Um Roger Klotz is it oh, What's so funny, funny? What yeah, funny? What a hurts yeah, what a hurts donut? Yeah, hurts donut. <laughs> And it's watching these episodes. <laughs> the voice acting is so funny because I Billy West does a lot of them. Billy West is like amazingly talented with the voices he does. But Roger sometimes is at sitting at about a four and other times he's dialed up at to like a thousand. Like I was watching oh, yeah. one episode where it's somewhat subdued and the next one the whole time. Like, hey, funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Christ. laughs> the God, the God, <laughs> and uh, like when we were looking at these characters and trying to think of like what impressions could we possibly do, it's like are there quotes from the show I could do? And then it's like, oh, Skeeter is like, well, I could just slip into Skeeter and you know try to have a conversation as we <laughs> talk to you guys. But get the uh, the the uh, the hit group, you know, the beats, the beats, killer so, tone group. Still waiting for the world tour. Stock? Uh, I need Are more allowance. More allowance. Go to lay who. Why? Because I do. <laughs> I need to buy some magazines. I need to buy some gum. <laughs> and Doug, for whatever reason, I don't know. Doug had, a hit. Beats. Doug had a hit song. Oh, oh yeah. Own, didn't he? Banging, banging on, on my trash. Tra banging that trash can. Drum it on. on trash can. I hear the voices calling me, calling me. Think big. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like random stuff all put together. Yeah. What about his sister? Judy, was it? Oh, uh, Judy. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> nice, the annoying yeah. beatnik. <laughs> yeah. Um, but those, uh, it, I was trying to talk about this before, those twins that would come in. It was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always remind me of like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Yeah. <laughs> but again, I mean, we, we glossed over it. <laughs> Great theme song. Yeah. <laughs> Catchy. Or, or the, uh, just like, you know, Changing, uh, you know, he's going somewhere else, and it's like, <laughs> which is very, very Seinfeld esque. Yeah, it is. You're right. See, that's that. that is your your road into the show. <laughs> Doug sounds. Yeah. <laughs> and before we move on from this show, got to mention our favorite, Joe Valentine, the most pissed off <laughs> character of any show ever, and he's so it's angry. Funny. Why? I was thinking. I was thinking, did I imagine that he was that pissed off? And the first episode he's in is just him 
counting down, trying not to get really pissed <laughs> off at his son, at Skeeter, who's playing air drumming and air guitaring to the Beats album. And he goes from being blue to beat red, just screaming for them to get so out. angry. It's so far so angry. <laughs> and we, and we, we can't be remiss to mention Porkchop. I don't think we did yet, did we? Porkchop, I, I was going to say it before oh. I mentioned Joe, but I didn't. Yeah. Such classic, a good character. It's classic good. dog. Yeah. 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 Porkchop. One of the one of the few episodes I remembered fairly well that I went back and rewatched that I still remembered a lot of the details from when I was a kid is when Doug and everybody goes to see a scary movie and Doug gets scared at the end and covers his eyes. Um, do you remember that one? Mm-mm. So he gets scared, oh, and covers his eyes and doesn't see what the monster looks like. And all his friends, everybody else in town is talking about how scary the monster looked. Would you say it looked more like this or did it look more like that? And Doug didn't really know what to say. He's like, oh, kind of both. And all look at him like he's crazy. So he goes back to watch the movie again with Porkchop. And Porkchop doesn't care. Porkchop just having a good time. And there's a couple little kids behind him in the movie theater. And it's like the 14th time they've gone or something. Uh, and Doug gets scared and closes his eyes again. But what makes Porkchop so cool is he goes a third time. Doug passes by the, the movie theater and they're not going to show the movie anymore. That's It was the last night. So he goes in. He has to face his fear because he's been having nightmares about it and he can't sleep. <clears throat> so he tries to close his eyes again and Porkchop gets up behind him and like holds his eye open like that. So he has nice. To see it. And nice. when he sees it, he's like, that's it. That's <laughs> it. You know, because it looks so silly and you can see the zipper on the, the guy's costume. <laughs> and it's, it's it's a perfect thing just in life, especially to teach as kids yes. that your idea of what you think is going to be scary is probably a lot worse than like your anxiety over something is probably Ooh. worse than yeah. whatever it is you have to do. Right. Yeah. Sure. Things aren't as bad but, as they usually. And it turns out and it turns out that he was the only one who actually saw what the monster looked like because everybody was actually too scared and closed their eyes or oh. whatever. And that's also something that rings true when you're a kid. Kids are full of shit. Yeah, they really are. They, they all just they BS <laughs> like crazy. They claim to do things that they don't do. They say, you know, it's all nonsense. And then, you know, Doug is the one that had the integrity is like face his fear and did it himself. Um, yeah, and Roger claim choked on a, a gummy bunny and looked down <laughs> at the floor. His, you know, his, his other you know, bully toady was like, uh, he's like, uh, I know I saw you look at the floor. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was a real cough. I was choking on a gummy bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, solid show. That that might be my favorite of the Nicktoons, of the many yeah, great ones. I, yeah, yeah, I think that's a consensus yeah. for the tech. I'm up there with you. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's three yeah, thumbs just, up. Yeah, I think it holds up. Um, it holds up very well with no caveats. Yeah. I have to say. Yeah, I agree. All right, so let's get into the next cartoon. Would be Rugrats, which I think might be. A fairly close second to Doug as far as uh, how it holds up and um, we can still enjoy at this age and enjoyed it at that age when we were younger. Um, Scales, I see you emphatically giving a thumbs up. Is that one you watched when you were a kid? Yeah, I loved Rugrats when I was little. <laughs> um, the theme song again, just catchy. Like, I just know words. It's like happy. It's like makes you happy yeah. hearing that song. Um, and uh, that's by Mark Mothersbaugh. I don't know how to say it. like Mark Mothersbaugh, I think, um, from yeah. Devo. So Whip It. Oh. So he did all the he did the music for that show. How about Robert that? Wow. Well, yeah. And all the show. like the in-show music too. <laughs> and tying in with the Pee-wee thing, E.G. Daly, who played Dottie in Pee-wee's Big Adventure, is the voice of Tommy Pickles. Oh. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> And now, if you go back and oh, watch Kimmy's cool. Big Adventure with Tommy Pickles' voice in mind, he's like, "Ah, oh, yeah, of course." Like, yeah, yeah. not yeah. I can almost. I, can, I mean, time. I can hear it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's cool. But continue. I cut you off. So you watched it as a child, right? Yeah. No, I mean, I, was, I have fond memories of watching Rugrats. Um, I thought they're you know the characters were all you know different, and they're all good. Um, obviously, Tommy, like the ringleader of the of these little kids, and. Uh, or these babies and you know Chuck, chucky finster uh, i felt like i related to him a lot because he was like you know cautious like safety you know <laughs> yep. everything was he was a little nervous about doing a little bit of everything yep. um, <laughs> you know was, i don't think this is such a good idea <laughs> yeah 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 that's yeah. me <laughs> <laughs> and then of course you know phil and lil um yeah. and, and angelica you know she was yeah. uh 
Just, mm-hmm. a, just a real brat. Just a real... And a kicker Forget right about Reptar. Buster, yeah. Didn't Buster Rhymes or something do the voice for Reptar in that episode? I want to say that I, I want to say that he did. Yes, in that and in the like, there's a part in the movie. I think they did the uh, the movie or whatever. I think he did huh? the voice or that. I I want to say that it was him. I mean, if it anybody, should, wrong, do, I if anybody say, should do it, it should be Busta, uh, DMX, or ja Rule. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Busta Rhymes. Wow. Rep talk. But we're not being my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that's great. Were, you, were you a fan back in the day yeah i would watch i enjoyed it yeah. um probably not as much as i would get into with doug but um i'm trying to remember like the lineup back then i want to i feel like it was like very close uh they played it around the same time maybe but I, it would kind of come on it was it was more of one where i i would watch it but it would be more of like background noise sometimes when i was a kid like if i was like doing something or playing or whatever but um but I, I would get into it a few times here and there i like the characters yeah. uh you know they're there it's just like a, a funny a little bit more wholesome I, I always thought that the parents were funny like the things that they would get into and yeah um yeah and i, I don't know i just I, I i might be getting a little ahead of myself but i just you know scales we we have a little connection with uh it, there's i'm not going to say anything yet but it was i had a connection to another show we might mention and Scales has a connection to this show in regards to um, a front desk employee that we used to uh, work with at uh, our old job that we worked with, uh, worked together. And uh, this guy, basically, he took one of the names from this show, and that was Scales' name. And then another show that we might be mentioning was my nickname. And uh, yeah, this guy was, uh, needless to say, he was a character. But always, every time I would hear that, it would make me think of this show because you know, whatever. But yeah, yeah, Scales remembers. Yeah, Tom, Tommy Pickles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what he used to call me. Huh? Apparently, I resemble Tommy Pickles. I don't know, but because it buzzed head. It's I guess head. that's about the only part that <laughs> resembles him. You can't. You, you, the guy, you couldn't take him too seriously. The guy would literally like you know belch and pass gas as uh, people were coming and walking by the the front desk. And the only claim to fame that this guy had was that he could always remember everybody's name. Yeah, and he would meet somebody, you know, for five minutes, seven years later, they would walk in the front door and you'd remember their name. And that's yeah. why they loved him. But that was it. Sounds like a classy guy. <clears throat> but yeah, he, not getting ahead of ourselves, but I was football head from A. Arnold, so. <laughs> <laughs> I have a big dome, what can I say? But it's not shaped like a football. <laughs> and he, <clears throat> call it to that. To, yeah. I anyway. Don't like meeting him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the grandparents are great on the show too. Yeah, um, yeah. So Stu and Drew's father, mm-hmm. who's is great. I don't even remember if their mother is in it. I feel like maybe she's mentioned off screen. I don't remember mm-hmm. seeing her. But Dee Dee's parents are funny. You know, like the like very Jewish yeah. Russian like style like immigrant. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> and, I, and they did a couple. I feel like it's one of the few mainstream shows that did like explicitly like jewish episodes like they did something about passover mm-hmm. um yes i, like I always thought that was kind of cool that when they would yeah. talk that stuff yeah yeah, yeah. I feel, was angelica the pharaoh <laughs> I <feel like> that's <laughs> probably <laughs> <laughs> um and angelica always used to bother me because she's the only character where whenever she turns to the side her mouth goes completely to one side of her face and like she'll turn this like it'll be here and then she'll turn this way and it's here so like it bothered me as a child and when I watched now, I couldn't not look for it this time too. I was like, <laughs> I watched a couple episodes. I was like, her mouth is doing the thing again. <laughs> um, it's it's another. It's a great show. Um, yeah. And my takeaway from it, <clears throat> my realization about it, kind of like with Doug, is that the children when they're grouped together and the adults when they're grouped together, it shows how similar they really are. That the kids have their own. <laughs> kind of mature way of going about things even though their understanding of the world isn't really you know formed yet but the adults are very childlike and very petty and argue with each other and cause issues even though they have all this life experience so it kind of shows that there are similarities between children and adults mm-hmm. um i, like I think the difference with Doug, difference with doug and rugrats as my cat makes a bunch of sounds in the background sorry um in Doug, it was 
characters of an age group that we were part of uh rugrats obviously we weren't babies watching it when we were on so there's a little bit of you know mental math you have to do to kind of put yourself in that mindset but i think that's what makes it relevant what i was saying before that the the kids are have a maturity of their own just without the world experience so right. even though their babies going through baby things you could kind of apply it to what you were going through as you know a younger child or maybe a very early teen um or even now um one of the episodes i watched is the kids mission was to eat some dog food because they thought if they ate dog food they would turn into a dog and oh spike the dog spike always <laughs> seems like he's so happy you know they, he gets pet and this and that um and they just keep getting taken away from it until the adults start arguing with each other and you're know, getting all aggravated and then <laughs> all the kids try the dog food and then you know <laughs> throw it up <laughs> <laughs> i i remember one um <clears throat> when i was little was uh the one where chucky eats a watermelon seed and he's worried that a water they tell him like a watermelon's gonna start growing in his stomach <laughs> you <remember that? laughs> i don't i don't that's great i feel like they like yeah. I, I don't this might not be true but i feel like they go like what is that old timey movie where they go they shrink this like ship really slow and they are really small and they go into the body and they have to like cure the person inner like, space maybe i don't know but like it's something like that where they go inside of his body and they have to like take the seed out of there before it grows and it's like growing out of control and everything i think isn't uh <laughs> martin short in that one maybe i don't know there was also that, there was uh an attraction i think maybe is that epcot in oh World. yeah uh, the human, oh, honey i shrunk the, the human no the human body where uh oh you were, you're in a ship and you got shrunken down and you had yes. to somebody mm -hmm. had a, a splinter and you had to go like yes. blast the splinter apart before yes. it, you know, it moved yeah yeah something like that yeah <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah rugrats and rugrats is still going i think they just they just rebooted it and they have new episodes i, I don't know if it's i think the animation is different yeah it's that's cgi something, it's that's something i want to something i want to mention about all these cartoons they all have the hand-drawn <clears throat> look or hand-drawn feel because i don't think that the computer thing wasn't really around yet because south park is really the one that pioneered using the computer for the animation um so it's it's nice to see it's still i mean still like i was gonna say new, you know, newer but i mean these shows are 30 years old um but it's on you know the edge of when they're gonna start using computers i think it's it's kind of nice to see the hand-drawn stuff oh yeah i agree oh yeah. yeah all right we're gonna start moving into a little bit weirder territory oh boy rocco's modern life Ooh. Now, for me, gets a thumbs up. I always like Rocco's Modern Life. Yeah. That was a hoot. <laughs> that was a hoot. <laughs> Rocco's Modern Life. Rocco's, Rocco's Modern, Modern Life. I thought I was crazy, but there were two different theme songs for the show. Yeah. It started, the first one was weird. It was, it was, I don't know. I didn't like the first it was, one. It was I, a little, I don't know when they changed it, but yeah, there was two different ones. The first one is a, it's a, it's a little more pleasant. I want to say not pleasant. Yeah. It's just like, there's a little more of an edge to the one that we would know better. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, bunch of bunch of crazy characters on there. <laughs> you have Rocco. Yeah. Rocco is what taught me what a wallaby is. I never yeah. heard of a wallaby yeah. before. <clears throat> Heifer. In this. Yeah. Heifer. Heifer, Heifer, the male cow. Heifer, <laughs> Heifer wolf, the male cow whose father always, is a wolf. Always eating something. Always. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was watching an episode the other day, and uh, his mother's name is Virginia. Virginia Wolf. I think it was. Uh, <laughs> nice. It's like, it's one of those shows where there's a lot of, a lot of adult humor. Oh, yeah. Need to be, not even necessarily raunchy. Sometimes it is, but there's just, it's one of those yeah. shows where it's, if a parent is watching with the kid, it entertains the parent as well because some of the references and some of the humor, um, like there's an episode where Rocco gets fired from his job and he takes a bunch of other jobs. And one of them was a phone sex operator. <laughs> uh, are you serious? Yeah. yeah. It's like, this is a children's show. But... I don't remember. Yeah. I was watching some of those things. I'm like, wait, I don't remember it being kind of like, this adult centered with with uh yeah. you know some of the uh, themes that they would have in it but and it was uh a little like i don't know i, I compared it a little to ren and stimpy like you yeah. know with some of like the i don't know if i'd say like gross it wasn't like the same kind of grossness as they would do with certain things but there were definitely some you know similarities with that 
there, there's an overlap there for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the like kind of surreal elements of it. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like it's it's not nearly as mean spirited as Ren and Stimpy though. No. Yeah. Um, you know, there there are moments like the big yeah. heads. Mr. Big Head is uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh Mrs. Big Head, <laughs> who sounds like a cigarette personified. <laughs> Rock, Rocco. <laughs> hello, hello, Mrs. Big Head. That's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. And what was the and, uh, the turtle friend? Gil what was his name? Gilbert. 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 That's right. Now I was exposed to the jerky boys at a very young age. My father let me listen to him when I was a kid. He's like, if you're going to hear this kind of language, I want you to hear it around me. <laughs> so I got to listen to the jerky boys from when I was really young. And by the time I started watching Rocco's Modern Life, I was like, I think the guy who does Sal Rosenberg does the voice for Filbert. And there's definitely overlap there. And as an adult now, I hear he's I think he's going more for Woody Allen than Sal Rosenberg. But yeah. as the show goes on, I, I definitely hear a lot of soul. It's mm -hmm. not Johnny, not Johnny Brennan from the Jerky Boys, but it's pretty close. <laughs> pretty <similar. clears throat> yeah, Phil, Philbert was my favorite character when I was younger. <laughs> um, and another great dog, Spunky. Spunky, Spunky yeah. is great. Yeah. yeah, Spunky's just a like doesn't really do much special. He's just kind of a cute dog who's getting into mm -hmm. trouble. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> yeah, um, definitely not as easy a watch <laughs> as Rugrats or Doug. Um, and I feel like I need it in slightly smaller doses than either of those two shows, but I, yeah, I, I still really enjoy it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And I tried to have it on the background and I just, I couldn't get a handle on it. It's like, it's one that I actually had to pay attention to more or less to right. see what was going on. Mm -hmm. because otherwise, if you miss like one cut scene or something, you don't know where they are, what's going on. Cause that's that kind of absurdist surrealist element to it. <laughs> it's all over the place. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, moving on to something similar, Ren and Stimpy. Hmm. Now, as a kid, Ren and Stimpy got a thumbs up from me. It gets like a thumb sideways from me nowadays. Um, I definitely enjoyed it when I was younger, but like it made me feel anxious watching it. Ren <laughs> yeah. is just so, <laughs> Ren is so pissed off and so mean and just so loud at all times. Yeah. And again, I never, I don't know. Yeah, you, I know the extreme uh, close-ups and everything. Yeah, it's kind of gross. It just never—I never really got into it, to be honest. I mean, I yeah. watched, gave it a chance here and there, but never really did it for me. And yeah, just those extreme, like gross. I mean, it's like I don't, I don't like watching any of those shows nowadays, like you know, Doctor Pimple Popper or anything like that, <laughs> or any of those damn things. So yeah. I just feel like this is like the kids' version of that, where it's like you know, zooming in on like you know, a disgusting band aid or something. I don't want to yeah. see that. I don't know. <laughs> the guy, the guy who created the show, is a bit of a maniac, and he's not. not Doesn't a surprise guy. me. Does yeah. not surprise me. <laughs> so, uh, you know, accusations have come out about him in the past few years of him like grooming and having inappropriate relations with uh, like fifteen or sixteen year olds. Oh God! So, yeah, and it's, I was watching. So there was. So we know. <laughs> Billy West. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that is perfect. B Billy West, you know, did the voice of Stimpy, who's really just, mm. he's doing Larry Fine from the Three Stooges. Um, and Ren was basically kind of a demented Peter Lorre impression. Um, like Peter Lorre mixed with like, you know, I feel like something Mexican, so I just have to yeah. my cat. <laughs> um, <laughs> um but then at one point, so the guy who created the show, John Chris Falusi, is the guy. He's like a bit of a not a good guy. <laughs> um, they let him go for being really difficult. And Billy West didn't follow because this was a job for him. Um, so Billy West took over doing Ren's <laughs> voice, too. And I found a clip on Howard Stern where Howard Stern tried to spring having John Chris Falusi on the show when Billy West was on it, when they hadn't seen each other in years and there's you know, tension. Oh God. And Billy West, Billy West <laughs> ran into him in the bathroom before the show started. So it was just kind of like, you know, what are you doing here? It's, <laughs> it's like an hour of just like terrible tension. It's awful. Oh. But what was really gross was at the end of the segment <clears throat> talking about, John Chris Felucci is talking about whatever he had going on and like drawing of this and like uh, Howard said something about sexy girl. He's like, hey, it's like, it's like an underage too. And that really didn't age very well now because yeah. it's yeah. Well. It, so yeah, yeah, gross. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's a little hard to watch Ren and Stimpy. Uh, 
based on what that guy was like but makes a lot more sense it, now yeah it's like you can see yeah. where the show's kind of twisted the show it's yeah. like it made me feel really uneasy now aside just because it's like the way the animation is and everything has that kind of 50s early 60s pristine pure sitcom feel but all demented things are going on in the process yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's it's like a you know sets up your expectations and kind of crushes them um liked it as a kid now it, it doesn't really resonate mm. as well but I mean, happy happy joy joy is like powder log. Toast, man log, yeah. log, log. <laughs> there's still i think it was a very it was groundbreaking it's just it's something i you have to be in the mood to watch you can't really watch it casually you know? yeah it's fair yeah. but there's, fair. There's, there, there are a lot of good things there it's just it's not it's not a feel good show no. not so much if you want to if you want to feel anxious and <laughs> hyper yeah that, that's the show for you precisely yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so now we're going to get into a few that i don't really think we watched all that much but there's one that i think both you guys did hey arnold mm -hmm. i did not watch <laughs> that's all duff <laughs> move it football head i don't know i feel like that was uh towards the end of yeah. kind of really being into those kind of shows yeah um yeah i don't know it, it I have it on i didn't really pay too much attention to it kind of like you know I, you know rugrats is definitely better but um it was there it was just kind of towards the end of like me really wanting to watch those kind of shows all the time but uh but yeah that's uh my claim to fame from our old uh, fellow employee i was called football head um but no it was it was a cool show it was whatever you know him living in the where did he live it was like like there was it brooklyn or something along those lines but he lived in the city and you know just uh, i think he lived with his grandparents um i don't think his parents i don't know if they weren't alive anymore or they just weren't there i can't remember so i mean it was him kind of dealing with like some you know yeah. bigger type issues and then i just remember helga pataki that was a girl that had like a huge crush on him and um she have the blonde she, hair out to the sides yeah yep and there was yeah she would like she was obsessed with them and um but would always give him a hard time because that's just how she dealt with it but then as soon as like you know his back was turned she would say how much she like loved him and all that so i don't know it was uh you know it's uh i can't remember his uh his friend's name um but you know very similar like relationship him and like you know skeeter and you know from doug and i, I don't know it was it was all right but again mm -hmm. Towards the end of my viewability, those kind of shows. Oh, hey, Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I think so. All of these kind of fall into that category. Um, Are real monsters? Saw it. Didn't really. Yeah. Didn't, didn't really get into yeah. it. You know, it looked like it was a good show. Just again, we were. I might little, have liked it if I was a little younger. Yeah. yeah. The only yeah. thing I remember is the guy with the eyeballs in his arms and yeah. hair, hair in his armpits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, cat dog. I just remember the theme song. Alone in the world, little cat dog. Cat dog, da -na. cat dog, da -na -na. alone in the world is a little cat dog. I, nice. No recollection of it. <laughs> the show, the song, I, think, I got nothing. I think there's I, more to that, but that's the only part I remember. <laughs> Yeah, that, I I don't remember that one at all, but I mean, it's it's popular enough to be on Rewind, so. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, probably the biggest of them, SpongeBob SquarePants. Not probably, definitely the biggest. It was probably, probably the biggest Nicktoon <laughs> ever. It's close between that and Rugrats, but yeah. I think SpongeBob's probably I, the most popular one, and I, I didn't watch it. I get a lot of, like, you know, people give me a lot of crap for this one because I say that I never watched it, and they're like, are you crazy? But... I, I feel like it was just outside of like literally within a year or two. I don't know exactly yeah. where it came out, but just outside of that, that zone where we could kind of get into it and watch it and say that we were all into it. I just, you know, I tell people that I, I didn't really watch it or get into it. And they're like, look at me like I have another head. Yeah. But the question is, so this is, <clears throat> this is a point where one year makes such a big difference age -wise. oh yeah so like yeah. When, when you're talking about your peer group as you get older age differences matter less and less so when when you're age ain't nothing but a number after a certain point of course 
<laughs> yeah, you got to throw in that disclaimer based on a couple shows. Ago. <laughs> I was just gonna say, <laughs> oh, might have run in stiffy. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, like when you're six years old, someone who's seven, it's a tremendous difference. When you're 20 years old, someone who's 21, less so, and less so as time goes sure. on. But when you're talking about a TV show, now I know we're all born in '85. None of us watched SpongeBob, and a, most of people our age didn't watch it. There were a few, but if you go even one year younger, I'd say considerably more people watched it. And two, three, four years younger, everybody watched SpongeBob. Yeah, SpongeBob. Yeah, agree. Uh, I think that a lot of the people who watched it who were our age were, it's funny, is kind tread, of on tread lightly the, here. <laughs> it's, it's, so it's, it's, so the, the progression was there were goths and then goth kind of morphed into emo and then emo kind of morphed into hipster. So mm -hmm. the hip, what would be hipsters now were kind of emo kids or between the goth and emo line. I feel like SpongeBob was popular among that demographic our age back then. Right. Um, yeah. But I mean, for the rest of us again had we been born a year later might have been into it and had we been born two three years later almost certainly would have watched it a lot because it was yeah. one of the most one of the most popular shows on tv at that point i even tried i never sat and watched it at home but at the pediatrician one time i was probably 15 or 16 or whatever and they have on stuff for kids in the office and spongebob was on and i gave it a shot it's just i just don't get it you don't, you don't yeah. like it so I, I did i, I did laugh same. i did I'm laugh once could, um, Spongebob had gotten a lot of trophies and Patrick was jealous and Spongebob says to him he's like, Patrick, we're going to go out, we're going to get you something shiny. And Patrick says, ice cream! <laughs> that, that cracked me up. That's, yeah, right. I, I, okay. I like it. I'm a, I'm a yeah. big fan of Spongebob. Not to go against you guys, but I... That's fine. Um, you know, when, when Anthony, when Jaden was little and then when Anthony was growing up, they, I mean, that would... It was, I mean, it carried on from whenever, like you said, 2000s up until when they were growing up in the, in the 2010s. So they, ha they always had it on and I, yeah. I loved watching it with them. I, I think it's hysterical. I watch it with Rosie still sometimes. But I just, did, it's like stupid, silly humor. Like, uh, but did you watch it when it was initially on? No, 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 yeah. no. Definitely so that's what not. I'm saying. I'm not saying yeah, that no. we can't like it. It's a bad yeah, show. Yeah. I'm saying that we weren't of the age group. No, yeah, I agree. Something that we would want to watch. It's <laughs> totally different. You know, when you're when you're too cool for cartoons at that certain age, it's one thing, yeah. but you could easily go back as an adult and then watch a kid's show and say, Oh, this is good, you know. Right. You I, get to a certain age, you can't admit that you're watching cartoons anymore. You'll be you know, yeah, they'll make fun of you. Can't have that. <laughs> Unless you had those those shirts where it was all the Warner Brothers characters that would be uh, badass, you know, with the, with the backwards you know, hats the and everything. Folded, of course. Yeah, the <laughs> I nailed my elbows twice on my desk trying to cross my arms like a schmo. <laughs> I, um, I have a I have a vivid memory of senior year in college. And I don't know if either of you guys are with me, but we were in uh, the campus center and there was like I it wasn't a concert, but there was some guy playing guitar and it was like the incoming freshmen were there. And he like broke out with the SpongeBob song, and like all these incoming yes. freshmen went crazy, and we were like, "What's the big deal?" Yeah. Like, yep. it, that just showed like that four year yeah. like, makes a big difference a big even deal. then, right? It's huge, right. yeah, huge, yeah. huge. I love China. Uh, <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> um, I had another point to make about oh spongebob what i do love about spongebob is that they have pantera in an episode they played a pantera song. oh really yeah that's cool absolutely I so i i never caught it myself i think i look i looked up on youtube i don't remember what it was i think that he's running a race or something but yeah they played a pantera song in it which is awesome nice. because it's one of my favorite bands um before we wrap up this nicktoon segment I can't believe I forgot to mention when we we're talking about Doug that you were Quail Man for Halloween. I might have mentioned this in the Halloween episode. Yeah. There, and, there, there are pictures in that episode of yeah. uh, me in that costume. Yes, and yeah. I'll, I'll never forget we had a party at our house. Mm -hmm. I answered the door, and there was another Quail Man there, <laughs> and I just I didn't even know who he was. I think he was with somebody we knew or whatever. I just looked at him and said, "I didn't know this kid." Oh, I was like, "I was like, oh, Joe was going to be pissed." <laughs> I, I, I I I have a vivid memory of. I don't know. I was upstairs. I was doing something or whatever. And, and I just, people are just like, Hey, 
find him, find him. And, and I could get people running up to me and like, you got to come downstairs. And it was like, I walk in, I'm walking down the stairs and like, there's a lot of people in our living room and it's like the parting of the Red Sea. Everybody parts <laughs> and there's another quail man. And everyone's like, oh my God, <laughs> mine was better. <laughs> By far. Awesome. I remember. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah who were you dressed as? You were Hogan? That was that the was, year there. Yeah. That was yeah. Ernest. I was at the Hogan. Yeah. You were Ernest. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, yeah. and a few people recognized me. A few people got it. Yeah, that was shocking. I didn't think anybody would. Uh, we, you know. they, they recognized me when we were out at New Haven. And then yeah. when we had the party, too. Mm-hmm. Both times. It's because you can do the Ernest look really good with your, with your <laughs> lip and everything. <laughs> <laughs> know what I mean? well we've gone through a lot of shows and we have a lot more to cover so this is going to be our first two-part episode so we're going to wrap up this part right now and then stay tuned over the next few weeks we haven't really decided yet when we're going to drop part two but stay tuned we might do a throwdown or two you just say you're going to drop it you're going to drop a deuce as soon as your voice cracked i stopped paying attention did you say you're going (laughs) to drop it (laughs) Uh, puberty (laughs) it's a killer yeah, don't, when 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 no, your ball when your balls drop, then you won't uh, have that problem I'm, anymore. I'm going to Tuxin. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I think you I think you got him tucked in already, and that's your problem. <laughs> uh, but but on that note, um, yeah, we're gonna wrap up part one here. Stay tuned, um, and we will be back with part two of this episode in the upcoming weeks. So hope you enjoyed this part of the discussion, and we will see you soon. Please remember to follow us on instagram and tiktok at throwbacks technodrome pod uh and like and subscribe and ring the notification bell so you can be kept apprised of all our new content whenever it's released and drop a comment let us know what you think of nickelodeon and all the shows that we've covered and maybe some that we haven't tell us why we're right tell us why we're wrong and then we'll tell you why you're wrong and if you tell us why you're we're right we'll tell you how much we like you um <laughs> but until then until next time we bid you adieu see you in part two see ya Later.